Hello everyone. Today's devotional reading will be from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 13, verses 24 through 30, where it is written, He put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. But while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat, and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, do you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. The slaves said to him, Did you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, No, for in gathering the weeds you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together with the harvest, and at the harvest time I will tell the reapers, Collect the weeds first and buy them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Weeds and wheat, a good metaphor for the church as we see it. For there's truly been some great saints. Jesus Christ came to save, and he saved many people. So from the worst sinners come these great, wonderful saints of the faith that we look up to as our older brothers and sisters in Christ. That, and they've made life in this world better, and this is obvious to everyone. And at the same time, there's people that are in church. They've been baptized they listen to the sermon, they confess their sins, they take communion, and they leave the building and they're just horrible human beings. What's going on? I thought in baptism, God claimed us as his children. I thought confession and absolution, our sins were forgiven. We hear the word preach, God speaking to us. We take of his body and blood on the altar. I mean, I, what's going on? Why are there terrible human beings who go through the motions? That's explained here. The nation of Israel, way back in the Old Testament, everyone had the same experience of leaving Egypt. They saw the same miracles. They had the same Passover. Yet some rebelled. Just like in church, there have been priests, pastors, bishops, district presidents, and so on, that have been a terrible human beings. They've engaged in, you know, embezzlement, sexual misconduct. They covered stuff like this up. And their only interest is their own bottom line and their own interests. It's terrible. How is this possible? Is not Jesus real? Yes, he's real. Case in point here. In the church, there are people that truly follow the Lord. In the church, there are also hypocrites. History bears this fact out. Is God asleep at the switch? No. God knows what's going on. And the last day, those that have thumbed their nose at God will regret it. They'll be separated from him at their request. Not saying, oh God, please damn me, but rather by my choices, God, I reject you. So God at their request will withdraw from them. Meanwhile, those of us who truly are in the faith, we'll hear the words from our Lord, well done, thy good and faithful servant. And so you think about hypocrites and so on. First of all, don't get too cocky. Be graceful, because you never know. We've all been at that point in our life. And we all throw ourselves in God's mercy and sake. Be merciful to me, a sinner. Forgive me for the sake of Christ. And so we are. And if we abuse Christ, it means we don't take him seriously. And Christ, per his request, will withdraw himself from us. So yes, if you worry about hypocrites and what will come of them, feel sorry for them. Pray for them. Maybe they'll turn. In the meantime, be grateful that you could come to the Lord in repentance and become his child yet again. Hypocrites are very real and very alive in the church, sadly. So are true believers. There's really no way of knowing which one's which unless you're the Almighty God, which you and I are not. So repent so you know you're not one of them. And just do your best, knowing that ultimately God's ultimate justice will be served. Or put it this way, God's so loving, he is unjust. He forgives us. And those that uh, don't take him seriously, well, that's on them. But God is loving, God is merciful. Throw yourself on his mercy and don't worry about the hypocrites. Let us close with prayer. Lord, thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your love. It's only found in Jesus Christ, crucified and risen. Guide us in him always. Amen.